Hey guys, uh, just wanted to make a, what I hope will be a quick video for you on healing because uh, as you know, the last couple of days I've been posting a lot of stuff um, around healing, what I'm seeing taking place on the earth when we have these energetic shifts and how they're affecting us in different ways in the body um, on a collective level mostly. And so um, first I wanted to just give you a little background on myself for those of you that are not familiar with me. I'm an energy intuitive. I'm also a way shower for the ascension process. And um, I've been open since around four, although I haven't always worked in this work. Um, I did hold a corporate job for a very long time until about 2008, but it was back in um, the late 90s that I started to open to my own um, spiritual evolution or ascension process. And then in 2000, when I had um, an incident with cancer, uh, that kind of opened me up. And through that process was like step number one of my crisis in awakening, which led me to uh, looking at food differently and, um, you know, supplementation with uh, minerals and a lot of organics and um, I also uh, started working out back then I had lost like 90 pounds um, I was you know pretty overweight at the time I think I was like 256 pounds and so I went to the other extreme and got super super skinny which was a little too skinny for my body and um, and so but in 2004, um, I had another run-in with cancer, and although I caught them both very early in zero stage in the very, very early beginning, because it was actually my guides that woke me up and let me know that I had cancer the first time, and then the second time it was like them telling me it's back and you need to go deeper. And so that's kind of what prompted the work that I do now, um, this level of depth depth that was brought on by the situation I had with cancer. So in 2004, um, I had already been doing the healthy eating and I had been doing the exercising and really just, you know, taking care of myself and my body. But what I wasn't paying attention to as much were my, um, my thoughts, my emotions and my actions. So in other words, I was still doing the same thing that got me the results that you know, kept coming back, which was the manifestation of cancer. And so that really was like the moment for me where I started to recognize that there was so much more. And through a series of situations in my life where I was just in a place of allowing things to unfold, I allowed myself to uh, enroll in the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. Uh, so I went to IIN, I think in 2005, and graduated from there after a year-long in-person intensive in, um, in the city. And, um, and then from there, uh, the minute I enrolled in school, I took Reiki 1 training and started my um, Real, really my activation, because I always look at Reiki as an initiator into our spiritual evolution and our process of unfoldment and awakening. So I took Reiki 1 and 2 together, and um, it was like I hit the ground running the next day. I started working on people, whoever let me touch them and have a Reiki session. I was uh, working on them, looking at the body in all kinds of new ways, um, tuning in to see what I was feeling. Could I feel energy? How did that feel? What was it like in the body? And that actually started to activate my ability to um, work with energy at a deeper level, to perceive it, perceive it to see it, um, to sense illness in the body and then became this whole new process for me of um, working with healing at a different level for the purpose of assisting someone um, 
who was going through, you know, whatever kind of illness, cancer, uh, MS, um, you know, nutritional issues, uh, working with problems with uh, kidneys or gallbladder, and then looking at all of those energies. And then I found myself leaving my corporate job in 2008, where I was making a big six-figure income to do this, and it wasn't a six-figure income, um, and then learning how to uh, work with uh, the law of attraction, the law of resonance, the law of oneness, the law of vibration, to really kind of come into my own to do this work on a full-time basis and be able to support myself. And um, so it's been a, a super process of unfoldment for me um, over these many, many years that I've been doing this work. And, um, and so I'm sharing this with you so you have a little bit of my personal background. And then it was just uh, along the way, um, I think in 2000. Nine, I started got, to get involved in herbal medicine, and that was a whole nother pathway opening me up. As a, uh, one of the teachers that I was studying with was into, um, you know, traditional Chinese medicine and using those influences. Although I do not work with um, Chinese herbs except to make uh, Jiao liniment um, in the traditional style, I don't really work with that. I work with the traditional. Um, you know, American herbs that we have here. And um, so it was this whole process that I was going through and then kind of putting everything together. And as I was learning TCM, I was learning a new way of understanding the energetics in the body, uh, you know, which went hand in hand with, with what I already um, was aware of. And then just started looking at how I could work with others in that way to assist them in their healing journey and so here i am today um, putting all of that work together and now taking it to the next level uh, after having worked deeply on my own um, spiritual evolution through the ascension process which started for me years before 2012 but certainly that was again another initiator or activator into a deeper uh, state of beingness. And so, you know, many mentors later and many um, of my own experiences and having worked with people all these years uh, coming to see me for mentoring, healing work, um, business coaching, uh, I find myself in... Um, an ever-expanding state of being, which is really exciting because I love to be in the process of allowing and just allow things to unfold in my life, which is uh, really about manifesting the next best thing, right? So I feel like that's where I am now, and that's what I teach uh, with all my work, whether you're coming for a private session or you're coming for mentoring. Um, that's what I am working with you. And it was in uh, 2013 that I was uh, first um, aware of a very strong connection that I had with uh, Jesus as I was doing healing for someone on the table because I was doing Reiki back then, which I don't do Reiki anymore. Um, my work has changed dramatically into more in-depth within the body structure on a very... Um, uh, deep level working in the electromagnetic field of the body or in the what you would know as a toroidal torus and so um you know going back to that period of time in my own uh, work uh, connecting with jesus in 2013 and then starting working starting to work as a channel um, working with the council of light and most of this was just my own i wasn't really posting or sharing a lot of this as i was using it for my own process of growth but then when jesus came through and let me know that i was going to receive um, the christ of light that kind of put me on uh, a mission like the red the, the hunt for red october if you will and so it was um it was my search to understand what that meant because nobody was talking about that uh, until about 2017, which was when I had another shift. And then I woke up to 
another aspect of myself, a deeper aspect. And in 2017, I had my first higher self come through, uh, who went by the name of Aluna, as I felt I was going up through my ascension tube or my ascension column. And um, as I was going through the Godhead, Aluna was waiting on the other side and came back down with me. And it was this very bubbly, effervescent kind of feeling in this golden light. And she basically let me know that it, her name was Aluna and what she was here for. So all of these different um, opportunities that I've had for self-growth uh, led me to the next step and then the next step and the next step. And so uh, back in 2017, I had also understood now what it was about receiving the Christ of light. And that is something that I've come to understand that I carry in my aura field. Um, it's part of my purpose here. And I am an, an activator, what you would call an activator. And just recently in, um, the beginning of August, I had uh, my fourth higher self become known to me, and that was by the name of FAITH, and FAITH stands for Frequency Activator Intermediary Transcending Humanity. So uh, part of that is that I um, can connect with people who are working with me, and even through um, videos like this, and share a transmission with them to help open them and activate them um, so that they can experience more of their soul self stepping through, which is pretty cool for me. And a lot of times I'll have people who can read auras tell me I have a lot of gold light in my aura field. And so um, it's just, you know, more confirmation for me of uh, where I am in my own process. Um, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to share with you something that occurred for me uh, two days ago. And I think it's pretty significant because it shows how we're coming into um, more alignment with every action that we take for or toward our healing process. And so I, it was probably like 9.30 at night and I had received a a call, didn't recognize the number, and um, although I wasn't wanting to take it because it was 9.30 at night, I was being prompted by my higher realm to just take the call, and I did, and it turned out to be somebody that um, I had, you know, pretty deep feelings for um, several years ago, and haven't really had any conversations or connections since um, probably two two years, I would say. And, um, and it was a situation of, you know, the old third dimensional empath and narcissist, me being the empath, and them being the narcissist and giving me the experience that I needed to push me deeper into self love. And so this was a very karmic situation in nature, although I didn't realize the magnitude of it back then, I realize it now. And it was never really a relationship. It was just a, uh, a relationship of knowing this person, experiencing this person, and their manipulation, their manipulative uh, behaviors and patterns. And it had been over a four-year process of dealing with them. And so uh, two years ago, when I just kind of ended this situation and just walked away from it because I recognized it wasn't serving a purpose and I was activating uh, to my higher self, which was when Aluna came in, I had the sense that this was a very karmic relationship and it was just here to serve the purpose of pushing me deeper into myself to, to make me look at myself at a deeper level because this was an individual who was very manipulative, very hurtful, um, had behaviors that were not serving them at all, used life situations that they had encountered to be the victim and manipulate, um, you know, my, um, my compassionate heart, if you will, um, to gain uh, whatever they could, you know. And so um, when I ended the relationship back then, uh, it uh, was very sudden and I just kind of just walked away. That was it. I was done. And I hadn't really, uh, I 
went through a very intensive process of letting go because it was so emotional. And, um, and I, in that process of letting go, kept redirecting my thoughts, redirecting my thoughts. And every time I thought that I, you know, was um, missing them, I recognized that I wasn't missing them. I was missing me because I was giving myself over or giving my power away to them. And, you know, if you think about it from the deeper level, um, this was a, a karmic relationship. So it was organized or orchestrated by the souls, right? Because we've all come here to experience certain things in our life. So nobody is a victim to anything in their life because we're all here choosing these experiences and then how we're choosing to engage in them or carry them forward in our life is on us. And so because the truth of the matter is, is that we're here to experience the fullness of our life. And so in, in redirecting my thoughts to that continuously, I was able to stop crying and to not miss them. And suddenly through the process, I was able to let this completely go so that it didn't enter my thoughts anymore because I actually had cleared that timeline from my field. And so now here we are two years later, we're in this whole karmic exchange. We just had this huge gateway blow open um, that the gatekeepers and grid workers have been working on. And I'm seeing all this um, trauma coming up, uh, root chakra, which this individual is very rooted in wounding in the root chakra. And, um, and so in my own process, when they called um, and I listened to the to what they were saying, the manipulation, so clear this time, and thought to myself, I don't know, I don't need to play in this. And I certainly don't need to even listen to this, but I do need to have my say because I never had my say in that I no longer wanted to be a participant in their reality. I was choosing to say no, and I was choosing to let go, and I was choosing me over them. And, it, and the healer that I am wants everybody to be happy, wants everybody to be healed, wants everybody to be whole. But the healer in me also knows that I cannot make that happen for somebody else. No healer can heal anybody, right? That person has to be 50% of the equation. They have to have the desire to want that healing because we can be the conduit of the channel for it, but we can't make them heal. They have to want that for themselves, and it has to be through a strong desire. It can't even be through a want or a need, because wanting and needing is very third-dimensional words, very third-dimensional energy. But desire is a very fifth-dimensional consciousness, right? So we have to choose everything that we're thinking, everything that we're saying, every um, emotion and actions very, very carefully. Where are we aligning to? So in this moment, I was choosing me over them, and I basically told them how I felt. I was not wanting to engage with them anymore. Please don't call me. This is done for me. It's in my past. I'm ending this relationship, and in my head and my heart. I was actually ending the soul contract with them in that moment because I knew what the contract was and I did not have to honor it anymore because it was over. I had gotten what I needed from it and, um, and that was what was important to me. So what happened though right after that, um, so I sat down for a few minutes and my friend who shares this house with me came downstairs and she said, what's going on? And I told her who it was and what transpired and I started laughing and I said, wow, you know, this is so telling and so powerful because I have no emotional attachment to this at all, to this situation at all. I don't feel it anywhere in my body. I don't carry it in my heart anymore. I feel so free within myself that it just felt completely amazing. And then I went to bed and everything was great. And then the next morning I woke up and I noticed that my right knee was bothering me. And I had no pain in my body up until that moment. And sitting in with my knee, I tuned in, I'm sorry, it was my left knee. When I tuned into my left knee and the left side being about the past, um, and the knee is where we hold 
pride and resistance of letting go, I thought to myself, well, this is not new, anything new. This is the old stuff clearing from my past. So instead of rooting into the pain or the discomfort or what I was feeling, I chose to let that go and let my knee just do its thing in releasing all of that energy that had been repressed, that had been stuck in my left knee all of these years since I've known this person because every time I encountered them, they made me feel less than and I couldn't hold my head up with pride, right? Because I always felt challenged by them because they would throw their victimhood at me and say, well, you think you're better than me just because you do this and I do that. And, and it was just all these things or you think you're better than me because I had this in my childhood and I'm a victim to that. So I never felt like I could really, you know, hold my head up because I was always playing into the victimhood that was coming my way. <laughs> and so, um, and that was two days ago, right? And yesterday all day, I carried this pain in the left knee. And as I just sat with it and let it go, and I, I did not go into resistance of what I was feeling and just let myself sit with it, I thought to myself, wow, how powerful is this, that this knee is wanting to let go of all of this? And with that, I just let it all come up and I let it go. And this morning I woke up and there was no pain in my knee. So the reason for that, which is the reason that I'm making this video, is because I released that timeline from my electromagnetic field and I didn't dwell in the conversation that I had with that individual and keep it anchored into my field. I didn't give in to the pain that I was feeling in my knee in that moment and go, geez, what's going on now? Am I, do you know, did I do something that I'm not aware of? Did I sleep wrong? Did this happen? Did I step wrong? Right? Because we can go into all of that and that puts us right into victimhood mentality um, because now we have pain, right? But if you think about it, pain equals resistance. And in this whole experience, I was not in any resistance at all. I was so ready to let it all go. And then even when I encountered the pain that I was feeling, I still let that go. So what I want you to take away from um, this video is that we hold ourselves hostage in all that we do. We hold ourselves locked into those experiences of the past through those timelines that we just don't let go of because we keep rehashing them in our minds. We keep bringing it back into our body. And then our body feels like it's its duty to recreate that emotion that you felt in that scenario or that situation all over again. And, you know, I'm here to tell you that we did not come here to suffer. As souls coming in to understand this human experience, that was never on our list of things to do. It's only in having the human experience that we get stuck in our awareness of ourselves in the greatness that we are. And every one of you is an ascended master that is here experiencing yourself in a human body, in your physical experience, and are not meant to suffer, honestly. Um, so I hope that you were able to take something away from um, this video and this story and see that we create everything in our experience and if we had any kind of emotional trauma in our past and we're feeling it, creating it in our body, right, whatever that's going to be, whether we're creating kidney stones or gallbladder stones or, you know, um, MS or cancer, right, because I'm speaking for cancer, um, we're running that same program over and over again. And when I still hadn't gotten it right after the second 
go around the second incident with cancer, I still hadn't changed enough of my thoughts, my actions, and my emotions. I, I created a cyst in my body in the same place I had the cancer. And that cyst showed up to let me know that, okay, you've changed enough of your thoughts, so you did not recreate the cancer, you did not dip back into that timeline again to bring cancer back into your body, but you're not quite there yet, Maria. You are still running some old emotional programs, some old thoughts that you're having, and your actions are still aligning to that old aspect that could very easily create the cancer again, because it's like once your body knows how to do that, it does it very easily, right? And that's why we have problems where things don't go away. So in this case, I created the cyst. And when I created the cyst, the cyst told me that I had created it because I was still locked into some of the old stories that I was telling myself about myself. I was locked into those old belief systems about my lack of deserving, my worthiness to be everything that I came here to be, to do everything that I came here to do, right? So I want to leave you here. It's very, very important for you to be in your awareness. Our words, our emotions, and our actions all hold a vibration. It's our frequency in our body. Our body has a frequency, and then the speed at which we are engaging that frequency becomes our vibration and then that vibration goes out into everything we do and it attracts the experience that we are telling ourselves that we need to have so if you are creating a vibration that's very low in nature you're going to attract things that are going to be more in a negative based nature than a higher base nature and it's always easier to create more negativity in our lives than it is to create something very positive because in order to hold a higher vibration and attract good things in we have to work at doing that it takes work right so it requires us changing our thoughts over from those that are not serving us to thoughts that are serving us in every highest sense available to us. So I hope that you have found something in this that clicked with you. And if for some reason you didn't, I want to encourage you to go back in a couple of days and listen to this again, but perhaps listen to it with your eyes closed or um, while you're uh, laying down so that you're receiving. Um, because sometimes I found that it's very hard to receive when we're in a state of resistance and our heart is not yet open. So if you like what you are seeing, I hope you will tune in um, some more. And uh, certainly it is my desire to continue to bring these video updates to you so that you can assist yourselves in having a better experience in your physical body as well as your spiritual evolution and just remember in everything you do be love for you first it's so important to fill your cup first right and take care of you because once you do that then you'll be naturally streaming that vibration of love out in everything that you do to everyone that you come in contact with and then you'll be receiving that love back and you'll be amazed at the wonderful things that are coming into your reality as you are shifting into a higher state of being within yourself. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. And I am super, super grateful for you to have stayed to the end of this. And I wish you uh, a wonderful, wonderful day in whatever you're doing, whenever you're watching this, and know that I love you so much. Thank you.